So it's a delight to bring to you uh, my friend Jimmy Wales, who is co-founder of Wikipedia uh, and has done amazing work, as you can probably guess. And he's going to talk with us about some of the things that we might want to consider when we're using Wikipedia. So here he is. Of the interesting questions for me in media today continues to be the uh, the growing amount of material that has been produced by the community at large uh, as opposed to the traditional media organizations and of course Wikipedia is a prime example of that but a lot of people even today I think ask some pretty fundamental questions about how we should use Wikipedia as uh, let's call us readers for now mm -hmm. um, what what do you recommend to people uh, in, along the continuum of believe nothing to believe everything? Right. Well, I mean, I think that the, <clears throat> the thing that we have to think about when we're thinking about how um, reliable is Wikipedia um, is that there is no one simple answer to that in, in some sense. So um, in, in one context, it depends on what is your purpose? What, is, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, and that really helps you to calibrate how accurate do you need something to be. Uh, you know, if you're just getting a, a quick fact um, and, and nothing really rides on the outcome, it's something you're curious about, you don't have to be as obsessive as if you're um, really making a major life decision based on some piece of information. And a lot of what people use Wikipedia for is that kind of casual knowledge. Um, Still, uh, it should be as accurate as possible, and our understanding of how to use Wikipedia should be informed um, by a lot of the, the signals within Wikipedia. So, you know, one of the things I always recommend to people is if the Wikipedians have put a tag on the article saying the following section doesn't cite any sources or the neutrality of this article has been disputed, ah, well, that should be a warning sign for you to say, hmm, okay, wait hold on, even the Wikipedians aren't sure about this section. And we try to put those in wherever we can. Um, additionally, uh, you should you know, think in a fairly holistic way about how surprising some fact seems to be. Um, a lot of times if there's an error in Wikipedia, it's as likely to be a glaring, ridiculous error because somebody put in a joke uh, as to be a subtle error. And so if you see something that seems outrageous, um, wow, okay, check the source. Um, so a lot of things that people should do, so let's say if it's an academic paper, so this is more rigorous standard than just, I was curious about something. And in this case, uh, you, you really shouldn't cite Wikipedia directly. You should use it to gather the background information, but really you should go to the sources that we link to, uh, and depending on your context, you know, even deeper than that. Uh, simply because everything in Wikipedia should have a source. It doesn't all, uh, but it should have a source. And that source is going to be inherently more detailed and more primary uh, and so forth. A lot of what you just said seem, would seem to apply to almost any kind of uh, information one would find online. I mean, absolutely, I think that's right. And in fact, when I think about the, the continuum of quality, one of the things that I think is interesting is, you know, so 30, 40 years ago, the, the range of quality of sources available to us was actually quite narrow. Um, you know, it's books published by reliable publishers, newspapers, magazines. Um, you, you could probably say, you know, of course, people had access to tabloid newspapers versus quality newspapers and so on, but it's still fairly narrow. Whereas today you can get anything from some real crackpot lunatic who's put up their own page to um, academic uh, journal articles peer-reviewed. You've got newspapers, a wide spectrum. You've got Wikipedia, hopefully towards the quality end of the scale, but it has its own challenges. Um, random bloggers, some of whom are, are brilliant and very accurate, some of whom are not so good. And so you really, there is a stronger need for media competence and media literacy to understand what are the strengths and weaknesses of all of these things. 